in this video, we are going to talk about the attention difficulties that occur in 22Q11 deletion syndrome that we will also refer to as 22QDS. In the first part of the sequence, I will show you the specific characteristics of attention difficulties in 22QDS compared to children in the general population who have attention difficulties without the 22Q11 deletion syndrome. In the second part, Joanna Meder will tell you about what we call executive functions, how they relate to attention, and finally, we will see how these attention difficulties can be specifically associated with learning problems. We will illustrate our presentation with clips from persons with 22QDS and parents who have kindly accepted to present their testimony. Attention difficulties are much more common in the context of 22QDS than in the general population without the deletion. Indeed, the frequency of attention difficulties is about 40% according to studies in the context of 22QDS compared to about 4 to 7% in the general population without the deletion. In addition to the 40% of formal diagnosis of attention deficit, there are a number of individuals who, without necessarily meeting all the diagnostic criteria, have significant attentional difficulties that may interfere with their learning or daily life functioning. Attention difficulties begin in childhood and tend to persist into adulthood even though individuals with these difficulties develop coping strategies for attention or impulsivity problems. Attention difficulties in 22QDS have been directly associated with developmental changes in the brain, for example, in interior regions of the brain and in certain structures of the basal ganglia. Study results suggest that the ADHD phenotype is different in children with 22Q compared to children with ADHD in the non-deleted population. Indeed, children with 22QDS and ADHD show fewer oppositional symptoms compared to children with regular ADHD. Most importantly, the notable difference is in the expression of symptoms as referred to ADHD subtypes in individuals with 22QDS. Indeed, the vast majority, between 60 and 80% of children with 22QDS, meet the criteria for attention deficit disorder without hyperactivity, while 80% of children with ADHD without 22Q present a combination of attention deficit and hyperactivity. The last element is important because in most clinical consultations, therapists identify attentional difficulties largely through the associated hyperactivity disorder. However, this clinical observation strategy is not reliable in the search for attentional difficulties in people with 22QDS. It is therefore necessary to focus on the observation of attentional difficulties like increased distractibility, careless mistake, or excessive fatigue reflected by the fact that standard school work requires a lot of concentration effort. These difficulties can also be evaluated with tests designed for this purpose. This is known as evaluation of executive functions. Let's see together, in this short illustrative sequence, a boy with a microdeletion 22 who presents attention difficulties. How is school work for you? Is it easy? Is it difficult? What would you say? Um, Do you seems, struggle in some things? It seems average. It's not too difficult, but it's not too easy. What's the, what's the easy part and what's the difficult part? Um, the easy part would probably just be um, the stuff in class. The difficult part would probably be the homework. Because? It's just harder to work in a home environment than a school environment. To concentrate. Yeah. 
And would you say that on average you are more you're getting more tired than others when you have to work for long times? Uh, sometimes, yeah. So you do have some concentration difficulties. Yeah. Would you you agree with that? Do you know why? Um, I, 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 yeah, attention deficit. But yeah. do you know why you have that? Um, was it something to do with the chromosome yeah. twenty two? Yeah, it's due to that. Okay. The, the the majority of people with twenty two Q deletion they do have concentration problems. It's due to the syndrome. We have seen that children with 22QDS and ADHD primarily exhibit the inattentive type of ADHD. In addition, they have low rates of behavioral problem, but a high frequency of anxiety problem. We speak of comorbidity, the different combined psychiatric disorder, in this case combined with ADHD, which are important because they often complicate the treatment. Indeed, the different associated difficulties must be considered to allow a coherent and complete treatment. Only a complete treatment can allow a lasting balance and a satisfactory quality of life for the person concerned. We will come back in another video sequence on the anxiety difficulty associated with 22QDS and deepen this important dimension. The research also studied the effect of intellectual difficulties and intellectual disability on attention and ADHD. The results remained largely similar when observations were restricted to children without intellectual disabilities, supporting the idea that attentional difficulties cannot be attributed to the effect of intellectual disabilities. On the other hand, the combination of attentional difficulties and intellectual disability can put a child in a more difficult position. Regarding gender, in most studies, attention difficulties are equally frequent in men and women with a 22Q deletion syndrome or with a very slight preponderance for men contrary to the general population. In the following sequence, Joanna Meder will now explain us what executive functions are and how they relate to attention. Often related to attention difficulties, executive function can also be affected. The term executive function refers to different cognitive skills, such as mental flexibility, planning and inhibition. We can think of executive function as the conductor of the brain. This conductor is responsible for different types of skills, including start a task or begin an action, mentally organize our actions and their order, plan what we will need to complete a task, move from one task to another in a fluent and efficient manner, direct our attention to what is relevant or ignore what is not relevant or check our work. Executive functions are involved in all new and non-routine activities. They allow us to respond to the unexpected and to react appropriately to situations. They are the key to an autonomous life, since they allow us to adjust to a changing environment. Specifically in 22Q, several researchers have separately assessed each of these cognitive skills that constitute executive function. For example, several studies have shown that compared to their peers, children and adolescents with 22Q struggle with finding an alternative answer to a problem or switching from one task to another quickly. This is called mental flexibility. Sometimes these individuals need help to get started or begin a task. This is called initiation. They show more difficulty to think ahead or anticipating the different steps needed to solve a problem, which reflects planning processes. Some studies reported that they need additional time ignoring an automatic response or interrupting a behavior. This is called inhibition. Finally, they struggle to retain long portions of information in mind, which reflects working memory. These results help us understand the difficulties individuals with 22Q encounter by separating each process. In the next clip, you will hear some day-to-day -day examples from a mother of a 13-year-old boy who struggles with forgetfulness, organization, 
and following instructions. Uh, just in always, uh, you know, forgetting things at school, always forgetting fiches, losing things, um, wanting to be organized, but just not, not being able to. Um, you can't ask him to go and get you three things from downstairs. He'll bring two and come back with the wrong one. And in relationships, as I said, to, to follow, um, he, can, he can often go off on a tangent in a, in a conversation or take the wrong thread or to participate and follow, to take turns when he was a child in a game and to keep was, was challenging. To get closer to something more relevant to everyday life, researchers at the University of Geneva put adolescents in an everyday situation. They asked young people to prepare a work session with peers, also providing a snack. The results highlight that adolescents with 22Q could forget part of the instructions along the way. They also found that these adolescents performed fewer different steps during the observed period and spent more time doing nothing, as if they were a bit lost, not knowing how to begin or what to do next. This real-life simulation tells us that these young people benefit a lot from external support, whether it's in form of adult guidance or a step-by-step -step procedure that they can refer to explicitly. But a crucial point of research, particularly in children and adolescents, is to better understand how these processes mature or develop with age. This is of great importance, especially when thinking about intervention or management. Indeed, depending on the expected developmental trajectory, one can decide or predict how best to support individuals with 22Q. At the University of Geneva, researchers have addressed this issue and examined how different cognitive processes develop with age in young people with 22Q and their siblings. They were able to observe that performance on task of attention and executive function mainly follow two patterns. What you can see on your screen is a red line that represents the trajectory of people with 22Q compared to their peers in blue. We can observe two things, either a developmental deficit, which means performance is lower than expected for the age, but individuals with a deletion make progress at the expected pace or we observe a developmental lag. That is to say that the pace of progress is less important in individuals with the deletion and thus, over the years, the gap widens with the expected performance for age. These results are very important because they help guide clinicians to the most effective strategy for intervention. For example, areas with a developmental gap that widens with age should receive special attention from an early age and could be interesting targets for cognitive training. Conversely, in the context of a developmental deficit, compensatory strategies could be implemented based on the strength identified in the cognitive profile. We will discuss in more details the accommodations and behavioral interventions that exist in the following sequence. As we have previously seen, attention and executive functions play a major role when it comes to learning in school. Indeed, being able to concentrate for a long period of time, efficiently blocking distractors from the environment, being able to mentally plan the steps to reach a goal and remembering the teacher's instructions are necessary elements for the academic success of all children and young people. A longitudinal study following over a thousand children and adolescents over several years showed that working memory performance measured in childhood predicted academic success in adolescents. This area is therefore an attractive candidate for cognitive remediation or intervention. In conclusion, we have seen in this sequence that attention deficits have a particular presentation when they manifest in 22Q. We have shown that symptoms of inattention, such as increased distractibility, making careless mistakes, or limited attentional resources, are in the foreground. We also discussed the frequent association of attention deficits with executive functions. 
we showed you the importance of studying the developmental path of cognitive processes with age in order to develop recommendations for intervention and management. Finally, we discussed the predominant role of attention and executive functions in everyday life and their relationship to academic success. In the following sequence, we will discuss the different interventions that are available. First, we will present behavioural approaches with a focus on accommodations that can help children and adolescents to function better. Then, we will discuss the use of medication specifically for people with 22Q.